What's up guys? Welcome to another Create and Invent video. Today we're going to take a look at hacking the battery life of a Sony A6300, which is a very good camera for recording at 4K, for color correction and doing some cinematic style shots. So this camera is amazing also because of its size, it's very portable, but the battery is really annoying. It lasts only about two hours or less than that and it's very small as you can see. So this battery life doesn't suit me at all because I use the camera a lot, shooting inside, recording how-to how videos and stuff like that. So it's like very long shoots and this battery is very bad for that job. So what I did is I did my own little device that allows me to plug a battery in this end and I can uh, power the camera by another adapter I had to buy from Amazon or eBay, which is this um, plug. So I can plug this on the outlet and this converts the electricity to the voltage that the camera uses. And then I have a adapter in the shape of the battery. So this uh, fits my camera of power for as long as I want. But the thing is that I can only use this inside my house or anywhere I can plug this. And that's a problem because if I want to go to the mountains, I won't find a power outlet there. So that's why I built this thing so I can plug any battery. So I can plug this battery, which is made for drones or RC airplanes and last a very long time compared to this battery. So you can compare there the size. So I can only plug this here, uh, unplugs like that. So I can plug this in here. And now I have a portable super giant battery pack for my camera that would last for a long time. So that's the project for today. So stay tuned to know how to build this thing. So we're going to start off with a bug converter. This is the heart of the whole project because this is in charge of converting the high voltage input of any battery into a stable voltage for our camera. Bug converters are very cheap and you can find them in different sizes and shapes. I will leave a link in the description of the one that I'm using or the ones that I will recommend for this project. You will also need an AC adapter that you can buy off eBay or Amazon. This is composed of two main parts, the AC to DC converter and the battery emulator, which is a shape of a battery, but it's only powering the camera through the power coming from the AC adapter. This is the part that we need for this project because we are going to plug our system in this cable. We will also need a soldering iron and some solder to have a professional finish in the connections. In the description below I'll leave the links of all the tools I'm using because they're nice to have anyways for other projects. Depending on the kind of battery you are planning to use to power your camera, you will also need the connector. In my case I will use the XT60 female connector. And finally you will need a standard DC connector, which is also in the description. So we're going to solder the battery connector on the input side of our bug converter. It is label in the PCV of the bug converter has in for positive and negative. Make sure the polarity is correct. For example, the red wire is a positive and the black wire is a negative. So I'm going to solder these tiny wires to the XT60 connector and then solder it into the input of the PCB. I will also use a 3D printer to print a case for this system. If you don't have a 3D printer, just use electrical tape to cover the circuit. Because my bug converter is really small, I'm going to use some header pins to make my life easier soldering the input wires. Since these pads are really small, it's going to be very hard to solder these wires directly to them, so that's why I'm using the pin headers. You can do it either way, as long as the connections are strong enough. Now I'm going to solder the wires into the DC connector. If you can buy DC connectors with wires already, that's a better idea, but since I got only the DC connector itself without the wires, I have to do my soldering job. 
And in case you have to do the same, just to let you know that the negative wire goes to the larger pad and the positive is to the smaller one, which is the inner part. The larger pad goes to the outer cylinder. Now I'm going to try to fit the buck converter and its connector into the 3D printed case. Then I will fit the output wires into place and solder it into the PCB. And to hold the wire in place I designed this little pressure plate that screws into the case. We can achieve this with other methods, like applying epoxy glue. We're almost there. Now we need to calibrate the output voltage of our buck converter. For that we need a multimeter. To adjust the output voltage of this buck converter, we need a screwdriver to move this tiny potentiometer that controls the output voltage. If we take a close look to the original battery of the Sony A6300, it says that it can provide 7.2 volts. Now, that's the nominal or average voltage. Fully charged, it can reach about 8 volts. Now, if we take a look at the AC adapter that we bought, most of them will say that they provide 7.6 volts at 2 amps. So we have to make sure to not exceed that voltage, or else we will burn the chip of the camera. This is a good opportunity to say that if you try this, it's at your own risk. Some bigger buck converters have a built-in voltmeter, so you can know the output voltage right away without a multimeter. The problem is that they are bigger, so you have to deal with that. Okay, so now I have set the output voltage at a good range, and all is left to do is to put a lead to cover my circuit. And that's pretty much it! We have created a device that allows us to use other batteries to power our Sony A6300 camera and therefore we can use it for much longer. There are still few things you have to watch out for, like the maximum input voltage of your buck converter. Every buck converter is different. The one I'm using accepts up to 28 volts, so it will accept pretty much any battery with that XT60 connector it's out there. I don't think you will use batteries of that voltage for this project. But just in case, take that into consideration. Most of the times I use 4 cells batteries, which are made for drone racing and are capable of a maximum of 16 volts, so I'm very safe with that. It's also a good idea to use one of these voltage alarms, since these kind of batteries cannot be lower than a certain voltage, this alarm will trigger when that voltage reaches the threshold. So if we compare these two batteries, uh, this is a 1020 milliamp hours and this is a 4000 milliamp hours. So this is supposed to last about four times more than this one. So that's it guys, I hope you find this video very helpful and if you like it, please click the like button and consider subscribing. And also if you have any ideas on what you want to see in this channel, please leave in in the comments below and I'll see you in the next project.